good to be here this morning. Yeah. Somebody didn't want me to speak this morning. Right. Challenge me this morning. Oh. Elder know yeah. what it's like running cross country while I'm in the race. Sometimes I get dry heaves because I'm nervous, mm -hmm. but I'm good. Because yeah. God got me. Yeah. God got me. Yeah. So, before we begin, everybody got your Bibles? Yeah. Let's hold them up. Let's do our confession. This is my Bible. This is I am what it says I am. I am this book calls me an overcomer. This book calls me an overcomer. So, that's, so that's what I am. Today I shall be taught the, infa the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, and I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just... We just thank you today, God. We thank, for, thank you for this time of fellowship, God. Lord, we ask that your presence would just enter in, Lord, and that we would just glorify you and that the, the word that you have placed in me would fall on good ground, Lord. Now, Lord, I ask that you just give them more of you and less of me. Have your way, God, in this place. And Lord, let the meditation of my heart, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have been through a lot these past few years. We have been in a pan pandemic for over two years now, and many have lost their lives as a result of COVID-19. Our nation was shut down basically for the majority of 2020 and part of 2021, and our lives were changed drastically. Never in my wildest dreams could I have ever imagined that many of us would be shut down in our homes working remotely and others better known as essential workers were out there taking a chance with the risk of contracting the virus. We had a president who believed that the virus would magically go away, like lucky charms, you know, and, and that we would not be affected. I never imagined that some of us would be in the hospital with COVID, but thanks be to God, we are still here. It seemed like a dream, but it, but it, was, but it was really happening. And, and then the fight continued. There was the fight to obtain toilet tissue, <laughs> paper towel, <laughs> disinfectant spray, bleach. Oh, oh, let's not forget the most important thing, food. That was the biggest challenge of all. As time has progressed, we find ourselves facing economical strains as well as global challenges. The cost of living has steadily increased due to, to, due to the pandemic and inflation. There is a war going on on the other side of the war, world, which seems more like an attack on innocent people in Ukraine, and this is where we are. The Bible speaks about wars and rumors of wars. Many believe that we are in the last days because of everything that's going on. But understand this, only God knows the hour and the day when this world will no longer exist. So in the meantime, Let's focus on what God has commanded us to do. Go out and preach the gospel. The good news about God's kingdom to, to a world who has no clue about who he is. So personally, how do you feel about that? Are you confident in what you would say to others once the opportunity presents itself for you to witness about Jesus? Do you just hand out a track? Or can you give a true account about having a relationship with Jesus Christ? First and foremost, you need to know who he is, which brings to the title of my text, what will you tell them about me? Jesus asked a similar question to his disciples in Matthew 16, 13 through 15, New King James Version. 
And when you have it, say amen. That was just one. Okay, thank you. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, I'm sorry, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? So, what can you tell someone about Jesus other than John 3.16? And we know, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now that's a good start, but we need to be able to give a well-informed answer of who Jesus truly is. First and foremost, we need to understand his authority. If you go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 13 through 15, And you have it, say amen. Amen. Thank you. I urge you in the sight of God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless until your your Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. The question that Christ gave was the truth concerning himself and his statements to Pontius Pilate. The incentive of faithfulness is the second coming of Christ when the validity of good confession would be openly demonstrated. Verse 15 states he is blessed and only potentate. What is potentate? Webster Dictionary states it is a person with great power, a ruler, a monarch. The Vines Bible Dictionary states that it is used of God. It then looks to authority. The word dunas, dunastes, that's the Greek word, which is akin to dunamis, which is power, translated in English is dynasty, which signifies a potentate, a high officer. In Acts 27, it refers to a high officer. It, it is, it is rendered to a royal ministry of great authority. And in Luke 152, in the King James Version, it just refers to being mighty. So Jesus is used to God, is used of God, and has great authority, and is almighty. In John 5, 26 through 27, it says, For as, for as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. Verse 27, and has given him authority to execute judgment, also because he is the Son of Man. In Genesis 126, New King James Version, it says, God said, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Who was God speaking to? God was speaking not only to what the New Testament reveals to be the rest of the Trinity, but to the entire host of heaven, the angels as well. The divine triune council, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost determined that man has to have God's image and likeness. Since the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit work together as one to determine what man should be like, this proves that indeed Jesus had authority. 1 John 5, 7 tells us, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, which is the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The triunity of God is also called the Godhead. And in Colossians 2 and 9, 
It says, for in him, Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of Godhead bodily. What do we believe that Christ, why do we believe that Christ, Jesus Christ, is true God? We believe Jesus is the true God because scriptures ascribe to him. 1 John 5, 20 says, this is the true God and eternal life. Matthew 17 and 5 states, Behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Some of Jesus' divine attributes include, He is eternal. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And Word was God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. John 1, 1 and 2. Jesus is unchangeable. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus is omnipresent, which is ever present. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And that's Matthew 28 and 20. Jesus is omniscient. He's all-knowing. Lord, thou knowest all things. John 21, 17. Jesus is omnipotent, all-powerful. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matthew 28, 18. There's more, guys. His divine works include creation. You don't have to go to it. You can just note it. In John 1 and 3, his divine works include preservation. You can find that in Hebrews 1 and 3. His divine works include forgiveness of sins, which is in Matthew 9 and 6. Lastly, his divine works include executing judgment, which is in John 5.27. He has one more attribute that I can't bypass. It is his divine honor and glory. John 5.23 says that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which have sent him. Let all the angels of God worship him. That's Hebrews 1 and 6. So thus far, we have established that Jesus has the same authority as God, the Father, and we know his divine attributes and his divine works. But we still need more information to witness to the world. Don't be fooled. Everyone will not receive what you have to say but regardless, you still need to give an account of who Jesus is by stating the facts. How does Jesus Christ differ from Mohammed, Buddha, and Confucius? Jesus claimed to be God, and he alone himself to be worshipped as God. Although he was a Jew, he did not think it blasphemous to make these claims, but boldly declared to be the only begotten son of God. Mohammed believed to be a prophet. Buddha called himself a seeker after truth. Confucius never claimed to be anything but a wise teacher. Jesus alone claimed to be God. <clears throat> Jesus Christ was not always man, but he became man at the time of incarnation. I know you're probably saying, what is incarnation? Not reincarnation, because... You know, that little saying, they think if you die, you come back again. Who wants to do that? Over and over and over again. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> so, what is meant by incarnation? It, it means that Jesus, the Son of God, while retaining his divine nature, took upon himself the nature of man, meaning that he left behind his glory, but kept his divine nature. John 1.14 states, the word, I'm going to paraphrase, the son of God was made flesh and dwelt, the Greek word means pitched his tent among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost within the Virgin Mary. It had to be this way because the first man, Adam, entered into sin. So God entered into humanity to bring about a second creation. A second man without sin of the of a second man without sin of the male line from Adam. 
the Holy Spirit brought about conception of virgin, in a virgin girl without the normal reproductive cycle of man. Now that sounds kind of good because, you know, nobody questioned it, but think about it. The Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, and without the regular reproductive process, she gave birth to Jesus Christ. The process of incarna incarnation yielded two types of natures to Jesus, divine and human. In Isaiah 9 and 6, it states, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. You may ask yourself, how could Jesus be God and man at the same time? It seems impossible that Jesus could be both God and man. However, when God created man in his image and likeness, he may have made us more like himself than any of us ever realized. But the Bible says we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And that's 1 John 3 and 2. And according to the scriptures, Jesus Christ is the very essence of God, his express image, Although Jesus emptied himself of his eternal majesty and splendor, he did not empty himself of his divinity, his love, his goodness, his kindness, his compassion, or his gentleness. His divine nature was never under, undiminished in the incarnation. Jesus was, was more like us than we think. His father, Joseph, was a carpenter. And he had brothers and sisters. Matthew 13, verses 50 through 3 through 57 in the Message Bible. If you have your Bible, you can switch to that. Just let me know when you have it. I'll give you a minute. I hear pages. <laughs> okay. When Jesus finished telling these stories... He left there, returned to his hometown, and gave a lecture in the meeting house. He stole the show, impressing everyone. We had no idea he was that good, they said. How did he get so wise? Get such ability. But in the next breath, they were cutting him down. We've known him since he was a kid. He's the carpenter's son. We know his mother, Mary. We know his brothers, James and Joseph, Simon and Judas. All his sisters live here. Who does he think he is? They got all been out of shape. See, we just, we just thought our people were like that. You know your cousins and your neighbors. You know. You know those player haters in the neighborhood and in your family. The ones who want to keep you in the same box where you used to be. In their minds, if they don't change, neither should you. Sometimes people have a problem with you moving forward when they choose to remain in the past. Jesus experienced rejection by his own people. Can you imagine returning home to your old block? Everybody looks at you like you're an alien simply because you don't do what they say or sound like them. I experienced something similar about one year after high school. Yes, I know I went way back. I ran into one of my closest friends, who was more like a big brother to me by about five months, only five months older than me. We were just chatting and talking about life since high school, and the joker told me that I talked like a white girl. I kind of, it kind of threw me off <coughs> for a minute, excuse me, but I came back on him and let him know that proper English don't have a color, so get it together. I think he was a little intimidated because we've been knowing each other. We went to kindergarten together. We were um, in first through third grade together. We split in the fourth grade, yet we remained in the same school until high school. He attended Northwestern, and I went to Cass. Where's my technicians? Hey. Hear me. Uh, thank you. <laughs> CT in the house. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play or hate. 
congratulate, okay? Anyway, <laughs> truthfully, I just believe he had, we had different experiences and different perspectives. I've known him since I could retain a thought. As a matter of fact, I don't even remember saying, hi, my name is Helene. And you're, and you're I ain't going to say his name, but he know who he is. And I have no memory of that because he and my, um, his mother and my father grew up in Alabama. So he was really like a brother. And he really kind of protected me like a brother too. So that was different. There was never an introduction, but he always was there. So it hurt a little, little bit because I never expected that from him. But I think back to what Jesus said about his own people in Matthew 13, 58 in the Message Bible. A prophet is taken for granted in his hometown and his family. He didn't do many miracles there because of their hostile indifference. See, your people, you know, they don't, they don't want to let, let you move on. But you just got to. You got to keep moving. So Jesus had feelings just like we had. Jesus was tempted by Satan. In Matthew 4, 1 through 10, New King James, I believe, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he, Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus said to him, I got to go back, I'm sorry. Verse 5, then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Now see, the devil thinks he's slick. Because he used to be in heaven, his name was Lucifer. So he know. He know a lot. And that's how he tried to get in, in your head by saying things that sound so good. But the truth of the matter is, if you throw yourself over that, throw yourself off the cliff, that's going to be it. You, you, you can't make it into heaven. So you got to be wise. But I, I think Jesus was getting annoyed by him because in verse uh, 7 he said, it is written again, you should not tempt the Lord your God. Yeah, yeah. In verse 8, again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, I think he had had his fill of them, away with you, Satan, for it is written you should worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. In these verses, Jesus experienced a whole array of emotions and feelings. One, he was hungry. Two, he was weak after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Three, he probably became annoyed with Satan after attempt, attempt, attempt. After all his attempts to get him to give up what really belonged to him already, power, authority, yes. Yes. riches, and glory, yes. lastly, he became angry and commanded him to leave. Yes. We have experienced these emotions as well, and we probably didn't respond in kind like Jesus. I'm pretty sure we lost it for a minute and, and let them know what we really thought. We, make, we could have had a Tupac moment. <laughs> and when to tell them where to go. But here's the difference. Although Jesus was rejected, hungry, annoyed, and angry, he never sinned. Don't get it twisted. He felt it all right. But he responded differently. Jesus went through normal stages of human development. As a child, he played with his his brothers and sisters, even as a child, Jesus recognized his life was consecrated, and he was about his father's business at the tender age of 12. He worked as a, comp a carpenter with his father, Joseph, and later went on to, de to develop a fourfold ministry as mentioned in Luke 252. 
He increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Sure, our experiences are different in some ways, but we still feel the same emotions. Jesus knows what it is like to be tempted. He, know how, he knows how it feels to be rejected. He has felt disappointment when his disciples kept doing the same thing over and over and over again, but he never stopped loving them. And he kept teaching them because he wanted them to get it. He felt anger with the Pharisees because of their evil deeds and their thoughts, everything, every thought, everything they did. He felt it. He became angry when they used the temple as a place of business and conducted money transactions, you know, so. Yet he still held on to his divinity, his love, his goodness, his kindness, his compassion, and his gentleness. His, div his divine nature still remained. So now, what can you tell them about him? What can you tell them about Yeshua? That's one of his names. He has so many. Son of man, son of God, lamb of God, the resurrection and the life and bishop of souls, the judge, Lord of lords, man of sorrows, head of the church, master, faith and true with, faithful and true witness, the rock, High priest, the door, living water, bread of life, the rose of Sharon, and the Alpha and the Omega. Because he did, we can. We have the same power that Jesus raised us, raised, that Jesus, I'm sorry, we have the same power that raised Jesus up from the grave. We have the authority to, to speak out against the darkness of fear, sickness, and death. It's him in us who makes us strong. Yeah. It's him in us who makes us brave. Yeah. It's him in us who gives us confidence. Yeah. It's him in us who gives eyes to see a hopeful future. Yeah. It's him in us who allows us not to worry. Don't yeah. worry, be happy. Yeah. It's him in us who gives us the tools to fight battles bigger than ourselves. Yeah. It's him in us who helps us to overcome darkness. It's him and us who gives us joy, even in mourning. So when you feel fearful and panic, overcome by darkness, know that it is in him. It's him and us who can tackle and overcome all things, not by our strength, but in his strength, in us. Because he did, we can. Blessings to you. What will you tell people about Jesus? And while she was talking, I thought about, hopefully it will be something personal. What he's done for you. How he brought you through. We've heard her come from one side all the way to the other, explaining who Jesus is, how he came, how he played, how he hurt how he taught, how he was disappointed in friends, how he was tempted at all points like we are, but didn't fall short. The one thing that I love about him is that he's a God that responds. He's a God that hears, and he's a God that answers. what I can tell you about him. He is a healer. He's not a way maker, but he's the way. When you know him, you are in the way. So everywhere you walk with him, you walk in the way. If you heard this word today, we thank Minister Helene for that word. This is a good opportunity for you to think about life with Christ. Life now and life later. 
The Bible says, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Invite him into your heart today to be your Lord, to be your Savior. Because out of all of the things he said, one powerful thing is that he loves you. He loves you right where you are. You don't have to dress up to get ready to come to him. He likes you just like you are. And so he invites you to come. All of you that are burdened and heavy laden and he promised to give you rest. Just come to him. So all of us are going to make a special commitment today and we're going to say a confession together. And if you are not saved, you can say it along with everybody else. We're not going to single you out. We're all going to say it together. If you're listening to us by way of whatever media outreach, social media outreach, you can say it too and invite Jesus into your heart. Repeat after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I give you my life. Today, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Today, Jesus, I believe in a miracle. I believe that one day you died on the cross. Three days later, you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. And on that confession, and with that faith, I am saved. Amen. Come on, give God praise for that. If you are in this room and you made that confession, giving your life to the Lord today, I don't care who you are. Again, he loves you just like you are. If you made that confession and you gave your life to the Lord, I'm going to ask you to respond to what I'm going to request you do next. Just raise your hand and say, I gave my life to the Lord today, Pastor. Are you here? Hallelujah. Just lift up a hand and say, yeah, I gave my life to the Lord today. Hallelujah. We also want to add, maybe you were in church and were out. You want to be restored back to the kingdom of God. It's available to you. If you heard us speak with tongues in this service and you're not filled, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking. It's available to you. If one of those calls are one of those, I already gave my life to the Lord, but I've been out of fellowship. If that's you, lift up a hand. You want to be restored. In Jesus' name. Just want to make sure. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord another good praise. Thank him for his word today. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.